All right, I'm Brooke Farmer interviewing you Chen Boswell. Can you spell out your name? Yeah, so. it is Y-U-C-H-E-N-B-O-S-W-E-L-L. Perfect. I want to do an oral history project about the first like generation settlers in Barton County. And I guess, tell me about growing up in China. Um, growing up in China, I was an average student, average kid, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in central China. Okay. Um, my hometown is called Xi'an, spelled as X-I apostrophe A-N. Um, it is the oldest city in China. It oh, used to be cool. the capital for probably 2,000 years. That's cool. Um, so growing up in China, at least, the, at least in where I come from, um, it was it, there was a lot of history, a lot of things to see. Um, if you Google my hometown, it's probably the <laughs> top three places to visit in China. So that's something I'm very proud of. That's cool. Um, I guess you know, kind of like education wise, is, is very similar to here. You mm -hmm. have elementary school. Uh, we have six year elementary school, uh, three year middle school. Uh, instead of four year high school, I have three year high school, and okay. then I went to college in China as well. Okay, so. yeah. And is there any differences between living here and living in China? Oh, absolutely. You know, the 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 culture is very different. Uh, you know, the the climate is a little bit different as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I always joke about like temperature wise. Um, here, at least here in central Kansas, it's very similar to where I grew up. Okay, but. It's never this windy. <laughs> so, you know, my hometown has clear four seasons. Oh, yeah. So you actually get to enjoy spring and fall, yeah. like, not like here. Um, so other than climate, you know, the food is different. Mm -hmm. um, of course, language is different. Um, how people interact with other people is a little bit different as well. We kind of mentioned this in class. Mm -hmm. um, so here in the States, everything, everyone's relatively direct. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, Whereas in China, everything's a little bit indirect. You have to actually read people. Uh, sometimes it can be exhausting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so what actually made you decide to come to here? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So what made me want to came to States is actually uh, education. Okay. So I finished my ventures in China in communication major. Okay. And then uh, I wanted to learn more about it and also like, you know, kind of just explore the world a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, at, the, at the time, I was already working um, after I graduated. And one day, I got a phone call from my advisor, mm -hmm. uh, formal advisor, and uh, he asked if I wanted to, you know, take this opportunity. Um, this part It was partially uh, funded through the school. So I was like, well, I guess, why not? It's <laughs> yeah. only going to be two years right you never know at a yeah. time at least you know I really thought <laughs> I'll come here um, go to grad school spend two years in grad school mm -hmm. graduate and go back home because I'm also only child oh, okay yeah. so like you know in Chinese culture it's a family is a big thing oh, like, yeah. you, you, you're not supposed to travel too far mm -hmm. um, while your parents still you know alive yeah so um, education brought me to Kansas Hayes Kansas <laughs> And how did you, what was your first reaction to coming here? Like, what did you think? Um, I, okay, you're going to laugh at me. <laughs> so, you know, why I landed in uh, Seattle, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you went through the customer. Uh, I landed in Seattle and everything looked and felt kind of like what I expected, what U.S. <laughs> yeah. is, because it was a big place. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, all the, all the traffic, all the, you know, busy um, business, I really thought, oh, okay, this is what I've seen on TV, at least, because mm -hmm. I watched a lot of movies and uh, t uh, American TV shows growing up. Yeah. And then uh, we landed in Denver. Denver Airport Airport was a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. less busy, also it was a night. So I was like, oh, okay, they, you know, this is our night, it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. And then we got on a bus on the way <laughs> before Hayes sent a, a bus mm -hmm. for uh, international to international students. So we were on the bus from Hay uh, from Denver to Hayes, and um, that entire <laughs> seven hours felt so long oh, and yeah. it was so cold. It w the air conditioning was so strong in the bus. Now I'm used to it, you <laughs> yeah. know. But at the time I was, I was wearing t-shirt and shorts. It was just so cold, mm -hmm. and that's the only thing I can remember as cold and it was dark mm -hmm. I literally didn't know where I was <laughs> um, yeah so once we uh, but uh, this is the part like I rarely shared with people mm -hmm. I I cried the entire Aww. time you know for 
hours because yeah. I didn't really know what was going on and yeah. what what's you're yeah. just like in this middle of this weird country on exactly. this bus in the middle of nowhere exactly <laughs> I didn't know anyone and uh, you know everyone seemed friendly but still like mm-hmm. you're far away from your family and it was my first trip uh, yeah like to a different country so like and I was like tw- 23 still mm-hmm. relatively young um so I cried all the time <laughs> until um sunrise mm-hmm. so at the time we were already in Kansas and then I saw the, the the sky was so colorful. It was so many layers, so beautiful. And I want, as soon as I look at the sky, I was like, oh, maybe this is not that bad. <laughs> like maybe it's not, you know, it's not as bad as I pictured yeah. it. Um, and you know, like when I realized Kansas is famous for its beautiful sky, it was mm-hmm. years later already. But I still remember that moment. Oh, it yeah. was very, like, uh, I would say emotional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was the weirdest part about going to college here? Like, what is, what can you still, like, not really get over? Well, the weirdest thing going to college here? Um, okay, and this might <laughs> be a little bit biased. <laughs> yeah. I did not understand how often students, even, like, my classmates mm-hmm. at the time, complain about school. Oh, yeah. Like, like to me, you know, like, education um, was priority in China education still mm-hmm. a priority in China like every single student understands you know I'm a student I'm supposed to put effort into school so I'm supposed to do my best get my best yeah. whereas here like a lot of time people complain about like how how much how many homework they have and how much work they have to do I'm like <laughs> And you chose to be a student. Like, yeah. This is your full time job. It's not not like <laughs> not that I don't complain about it, mm-hmm. but like, not as often. So that w- that's probably one thing that I'm still trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. I just think you know my husband and I talk about this. He grew up in, in the U S. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Kansas, so we talk about like here, everything, um, everyone is very encouraging. Yeah. Like whatever student uh, students do. Uh, even if they did the minimum, it's you're the best. You did, the, you know, you're the best. Although, like most of the time, it's not the truth. <laughs> yeah. Whereas in China, it's an extreme, uh, mm-hmm. like opposite. Like you, you could work really hard, and you're yeah. still not good enough. You need to be uh, work harder. You need to be more competitive. Yeah. So that's probably one thing I'm still trying to like balance. Mm-hmm. Um, especially now that I'm a teacher, I'm trying to like see more from the student's perspective. Mm-hmm. So how long did like your culture shock last? Like coming from all the way from China to here? Oh, I would say a whole year. Wow. Like yeah. at least. Least, uh, at least a whole year. I mean, the first semester was very like more dramatic. Mm-hmm. You're getting into like all the all the you know culture shock, all the yeah. differences. Um, especially, I would say like in central Kansas, mm-hmm. it's very very different compared to uh, what you've seen on TV. Oh, you know, yeah. I watch Shameless, I watch <laughs> yeah. Friends. Yeah. That's not based here, no. and you rarely see this kind of culture because I didn't grow up watching like cowboy mm-hmm. uh, movies or western movies, so like I didn't really know uh, agriculture um, was such a big thing in Kansas. Mm-hmm. So um, the first semester was just pretty rough um you like at the time i had to overcome my language barrier Mm -hmm. you know you have so many ways to say things yeah um i remember telling my mom in the first (laughs) minute i was like i feel like i understand every single word but i put them together i don't know what that means i don't know (laughs) what they're talking about like everything's really fast and you have your own like dialogue you have Mm -hmm. your own slings so it's very different but uh i would say the whole year like i finally adapt mm-hmm. a little bit um, to this kind of culture yeah so when you came here did you know any English at all or? yeah yeah I um so I we in China like we teach English mm-hmm. in school um depends on where you um are located or your yeah. school like district my my school district excuse me started uh middle school so okay. second year of middle school I would say like 14 15 years mm-hmm. old um, but I would say, like, my spoken skills, language language skills definitely improved in over the years. Okay, yeah. So how different is college here from college in China? It is very different, actually. Um, you know, I, I, I joke a, a, about, you know, how dedicated mm-hmm. uh, Chinese students are um, in school. 
but like here I feel like correct me if mm-hmm. I'm wrong because um, I didn't go to high school here but I interacted with a lot of high school students for yeah. this job so I feel like high schools are relatively like flexible yes. it's not that intense like no. homework wise or school activity wise um, you know you go to school from probably 8 to mm-hmm. 3 o'clock yeah. and then you have more activities um, whereas in college you have more time mm-hmm. management to do on your own you have more assignments um, in China it's opposite way. Oh, okay. like high school was very intensive because since we have such a like high mm-hmm. um, population not everyone gets to go to a high uh, college excuse me mm-hmm. so I would say like 30% of people um, go to college okay, so okay. if you wanted to be that 30% you have to work really really hard in high school so high school was very intensive mm-hmm. like everything is um, jammed into that one day um, my regular work day in high school is from probably 8 o'clock to all the way to like 6 or 7 Ooh. even later depends on the, the school district some schools have night schools uh, mm-hmm. as well um, whereas college here mm-hmm. college sorry college in China yeah. it's more flexible okay. it's less work since you're already past that mm-hmm. you're already 30% you know <laughs> yeah. you, you are dedicated enough so yeah. college was not as busy I would say okay interesting so how long did you go to college here for um four years in total so I finished two master's degrees Mm -hmm. so between these two year uh, these two degrees I have I had a one year gap okay um so in total four years but two for first a a master program and two for the second one okay and then how did you get your upper down job which is actually how we met (laughs) oh yeah right right. Uh, absolutely so um while I I think that was before I graduated with my second mm-hmm. degree. Uh, so at the time I was job searching. Um, it was probably already after Eastern, I remember. So in two months I would mm-hmm. I would be graduating. So I had I started looking, and actually the lady who had this job before I did, Mackenzie, mm-hmm. you probably remember her. We went to school together in oh, okay. uh, at Fort Hayes, and um, Mackenzie used to work with another lady. For Applebound during summer, um, mm-hmm. her name is, uh, is Edith. Edith also like uh, went to Fort Hayes with me, so mm-hmm. we uh, we had a really good work relationship on campus. Mm-hmm. And then Edith told me about this opportunity. Edith said, you know, Mackenzie's going to a law school, and this job is open. Like you should check out. Mm-hmm. You know, you are in Great Bend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is an, a job in Great Bend. Uh, you might like it. Because, like, on campus, I did a lot of, like, academic work as yeah. well. While I was a teaching assistant, I also worked with students on their advice, adv- advisement, excuse me. Um, so I reached out to uh, uh, Patrick Bush and mm-hmm. to get, gather more information to see if this is what I wanted. And then we went through interview, um, you know, all the practice. And this is how I landed here in <laughs> at Barton. All right. So how did you actually meet your husband? Oh, okay. So Corby and I met in grad school. Okay. Um, so we were classmates. You know, in grad school, you mm-hmm. almost take every single class with the same people over and over again. So mm-hmm. we were classmates. Okay. Okay. And so did you already live in Barton when you got the job with your husband? Yes. Okay. Yes. So at the time, uh, we, we were already married um, before I started working at Barton. At the time... Um, I was commuting from Hayes, uh, from Great Bend to Hayes. Okay. Um, the reason we like we moved to Great Bend is because Corby graduated before I did. Okay. Um, so he got a job here, and then went, then we moved here. Okay. Okay. And so I guess, do you like Barton County? <laughs> I mean, I, I do. I do. I mean, um, I I didn't at beginning. Let's mm-hmm. be honest. Uh, like I didn't because it was it was very quiet, yeah. not a whole lot of things to do. And at the time when I moved here, I was like twenty five years old. You know, I like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I I wanted to have fun, mm-hmm. have all the cool stuff. So it was very quiet. I didn't like it. Um, but it really depends on, you know, your social group, mm-hmm. who you hang out with, and what you do, and what your priorities are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, gr- growing up in a big city, one thing that I definitely took granted is how many things you can do oh yeah and while i was i'm out in my hometown i still didn't do much because mm-hmm. you just took granted for it like it, it's, yeah. it's gonna be there like yeah the event, you have seven different things this weekend <laughs> like i might just go to one mm-hmm. but here you know now that we i at least my myself 
um, have been living in a small town, uh, either Hayes or Gripen, for mm-hmm. eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I learned about small town is like you really, you know, are grateful for the little tiny things. Yeah. The, because you don't have a whole lot to do, <laughs> no. so you just have to find your own fun. Um, and that actually helped me appreciate life itself a little bit more. Okay, okay. So when you had your upper bound job, what was your favorite part? My favorite part, definitely talk to students. <laughs> I, I, I loved that interaction, you know. Uh, I never picture myself driving to high school and talking to <laughs> high school yeah. students, but I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like uh, we have very um, positive students or you know, dedicated students like you yourself. Mm-hmm. We also have some students, you know, are needed a little bit more work, mm-hmm. um, but just getting to know um, every one of them, getting to know their background, and getting to see um, all the students grow into people that they expected that's very fulfilling for me mm-hmm. at least so I really enjoyed that part yeah so when we were in DC like it was your last mm-hmm. time going on the trip with yeah them. What, did, what were your whole like what were your thoughts on all of that DC trip yeah because that was your last time going with the upper bound group right um I I really enjoyed it first of all and the second thing is, at the time, um, I already left the, the work, mm-hmm. the job, so uh, no one already took over. The reason they tagged me along because, you know, my last summer was COVID, <laughs> yeah. so we didn't do anything. Yeah. So tagged me along. And also, like, I get to enjoy the, <laughs> the, the view. Exactly. Instead of, like, worrying about students. Mm-hmm. Um that I feel bad for no one on that trip, you know, like, so oh, I'm, yeah. I'm very grateful for oh, the yeah. opportunity. And also, like, when you're not on the position, mm-hmm. like, you get to see um, more about students. Mm-hmm. Like, think about yourself at the oh, time. Yeah. I, I wasn't your teacher. I wasn't your uh, advisor at the time. Mm-hmm. We were just, like, people happen to yeah. be on the same trip together and you get to like chat more mm-hmm. uh, without like burden or concerns. Because yeah, I remember me and Joe really tried to get you to take the stuff we bought. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It, it, was, it, it was just like, you know, people enjoying their time mm-hmm. together. So I, I liked it, mm-hmm. yeah. So how did you get your teaching job here then? How did I get it? Mm-hmm. Um, it's very interesting because so after... Shortly after I started working uh, for Upper Bound, um, they had a job opening here mm-hmm. in this division. Um, it was a communication structure. Um, I never thought about applying because I really enjoyed my Upper Bound job. And mm-hmm. then the, the, the dean actually reached out oh, okay. um, and he asked about my background and then he asked about my experience. Um, and he said, you know, like at this point, we're going to leave this job open. Uh, we're going to gather more candidates. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, we're trying to build a new program mm-hmm. and I wanted to learn more about you over the years. So, so like Patrick is still talking about, you know, <laughs> how this division still mm-hmm. stole uh, me, but that's not the case. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we started building this new program while I teach mm-hmm. uh, interpersonal communication and public uh, speaking, um, two classes I taught already uh, for Hayes. So, you know, it was a good like transition. Um, and I enjoyed the interview. I, I got to know more about this division, um, students group, and what I would be doing. And it, that was exciting because you're creating something mm-hmm. new. So, yeah. Okay. And then you have a new son. How is it different raising a son here than it would be in China? Um, you know, I don't know if I can fully understand, like, fully under, uh, answer that question because mm-hmm. I only had experience here. Mm-hmm. But one major difference I can tell you um, that is for sure going to be different <laughs> is um, how many people help you raise mm-hmm. your kid. Um, I say, quote unquote, help or, you know, boss you around. <laughs> yeah. Like here, like family is based on two people, like based on marriage. You mm-hmm. have uh, two people and then you have the, your next generation. Whereas in China, family is three more generations tied together. It's kind of like a Hispanic family, mm-hmm. too. So you're, like, if I were uh, raising Bowen, if we were raising Bowen in China, my parents would get involved, mm-hmm. um, and Corby's parents would get involved. Okay. So you ha- suddenly you have, like, 
eight people, yeah. six people taking care of this baby.、Mm-hmm. Um, most of the time, it will be very convenient, so you don't have to think about like babysitter, or、mm-hmm. you can you know go to different places. But sometimes, you know, you also get a lot of opinion from other people,、oh, yeah. even when they're、oh, your parents.、Yeah. Uh, that can be annoying, difficult sometimes.、Yeah. So I know your parents aren't here, but do you still like call them on the phone、mm-hmm. a lot to show them Bowen? Yeah, we Facetime. We Facetime、Let's、probably like, every month.、Um, I'm not a huge Facetime person.、Mm-hmm. Like I just didn't <laughs> really enjoy it.、Um, but you know, the only people I Facetime are probably my parents, <laughs> and I, we will like put Bowen、uh, up like、mm-hmm. uh, close to the camera and interact with. My parents a little、mm-hmm. bit. Bowen is very like happy. He's always smiling,、yeah. and he like cuckoos a lot.、Aww. So、uh, that really definitely、uh, helped、mm-hmm. with you know being so far away、yeah. from、uh, his grandparents. Are you going to teach him like Chinese and all the culture as best you can? Yeah, I, exactly. Like <laughs> the best I can because you know here we don't have the strong co-、yeah. Chinese culture. Um, so it heavily relied on me, one、mm-hmm. person, to be in charge of the language part. We actually started like、uh, talking to him in、uh, Mandarin Chinese as、mm-hmm. much as I can,、um, but sometimes it's difficult because、yeah. I'm not a language teacher. You know, like <laughs>、yeah. all I can do is talk to him in、mm-hmm. my mother tongue.、Um, but we do like the plan to celebrate、uh, the culture and、mm-hmm. its holidays or. You know important dates as many as we can.、Um, he actually like just celebrated his a hundred days. Oh.、Um, so a hundred days is like a big deal in China. It's like a a hundred days milestone.、Mm-hmm. Uh, it represents you know long life,、uh, healthy, happy、uh, life. So we celebrate that.、Mm. Um, Kobe and I went to get ice cream for him. <laughs> yeah. So we're very sweet on that part. <laughs> But yeah, and my parents sent me some like traditional、um, silver lock.、Um, it's like kind of like a little jewelry little kids can wear just for the photos、mm-hmm. or for the representation.、Um, so we're trying to、mm-hmm. at least I'm, I'm trying to do as much <laughs> as I can. Yeah, because I was like, because my nephew he's half Mexican, and I was and I was wondering, I'm like, I hope he wants to like explore yeah, that a little right, bit. Right, yeah, right. it might be difficult because right here the majority. Is you know、yeah. white and speaking English, so it might be difficult for him. We'll see、mm-hmm. how it goes. Yeah. So have you gone back to China at all since being here? Yeah, yeah. So、um, I came to the States twenty in twenty fourteen.、Uh, the first time I went back was twenty fifteen, and then twenty eighteen. So twice. Okay.、Um, I we were gonna go back in twenty twenty, and then you know pandemic、yeah. happened, so that never <laughs> happened. Yeah.、Um, and hopefully we can go next summer. That'd、uh, be cool. You know, we'll see how it goes with traveling with a baby,、mm-hmm. also with all this COVID <laughs> restrictions.、Yeah. So. Fingers crossed. I hope、yeah. I can go. So, do you think when like Bowen's older, you would ever like move back to China and live there, or do you think you're gonna stay in the states? Um, I think we're gonna st- like most of the time we'll still stay in the states, like, um, because you know my my jobs get here, my family is here now,、mm-hmm. um, like we have relatively、um, deeper roots here now.、Mm-hmm. Um, and also, he'll be growing up in this area, so I don't、mm. want to give him like culture shock too early. Yeah. But during the summer,、uh, if I were still teaching,、mm-hmm. during the summer, I I plan to take home uh, him um, to China, spend probably、uh, two months there,、mm-hmm. um, so he can still like、um, connect with his parents,、uh, his grandparents,、mm-hmm. my parents. Um, and then get to learn more about the language, the culture, and explore. You know where、mm-hmm. his mom come from. That'd be cool. So, do you think you're gonna stay in Barton County forever, or do you plan on venturing out more? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, you know, like I and I, I don't want to limit my opportunities. You、mm-hmm. know, I, I already moved so far away. <laughs> like when、yeah. I move, it's gonna be similar.、Uh, I don't want to limit myself, and also I'm open to opportunities.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's gonna depends on you know. Well, how we feel about our jobs and our you know friendship here,、mm-hmm. uh, all that things in consider. But one thing that pandemic I would say like contribute to the society、mm-hmm. is、um, you get to work remotely anywhere. So、yeah. hopefully you know we get to travel a little bit more.、Mm-hmm. Um, but future you never know. Yeah. And whatever comes, I'll just <laughs> embrace it. I guess. 
Yeah. So I don't have any more questions, but do you have any stories you have to share, maybe from your childhood growing up in China? Like, anything you can remember? Um, I, I don't know if I have, like, specific uh, questions. A, uh, like stories mm -hmm. I'm like a very average person you know, in, <laughs> yeah. in, in China my parents are you know middle class mm -hmm. um, and being only child it was a common thing in mm -hmm. China so it, I wasn't a special kid at all mm -hmm. um, my parents they are relatively strict um, which is also common yeah. among Chinese parents so like I never we never thought <laughs> you know I would move out of the country and <laughs> yeah. live here for so long but you know you mm -hmm. never know life just happens um growing up i never had pets <laughs> oh interesting my mom is very strict mm. and she doesn't like you know pets also like i bet you know now now that i yeah. understand a little bit more she was very busy mm -hmm. with work so she didn't have time or energy to take care of pets. So growing up, I always wanted to have pets. I mm -hmm. always tell myself like, once I, once I, once I grow up, I'm gonna have my own dog and cats. <laughs> and now that I have a dog and two cats, it's just a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. I understand why my mom didn't start it. So like, as you grow, you learn more about mm -hmm. your parents a little bit more yeah. too. So I know there was that one child policy, uh -huh. and like I know a lot of Asian culture doesn't really. Like, I don't want to say appreciate, mm -hmm, but they mm -hmm. favor men. Did you ever feel any of that growing up? Definitely, definitely. You know, like, gender equity is a big problem in China. Uh, growing up, and even today, I think today is a little bit better. People mm -hmm. are more aware of that kind of difference. But growing up, you know, it was it was so common and almost natural to hear, you know, oh, you're a girl, like, don't be so ambitious. Mm -hmm. Don't be so competitive. Don't work so hard. Um, if you could just marry rich, that would be great. Like, you don't have to work hard. Mm -hmm. You don't need to get the best education. So that was almost natural and common um, for ladies to hear. But, like, I would mm -hmm. say um, I'm very grateful for my parents. Uh, they met in college. Mm -hmm. My mom was never, like, my mom gave me a clear direction, like, yeah. what women can and cannot do. And she always tells me, you know, don't, don't let anyone tell you what mm -hmm. you can and cannot do. If you want to try different things, try different things. Mm -hmm. If you fail, you fail. It's not it's not a big deal. Um, so I I'm I will be forever grateful for that kind of perspective that definitely made me a stronger woman mm -hmm. I am today. Um, but like yeah, like gender equality um, is a big problem because I um, like from my dad's side. Um, we, I only had one male cousin. Oh, okay. And he is the one who's carrying the yeah. family name, the, <laughs> yeah. the Wong family name, you know. Yeah. Um, and then everyone was very, like, excited <laughs> about him, and we put a lot of effort and expectation on him. Mm -hmm. um, and you can tell he was stressed, too. Mm -hmm. And for the rest of our, like, us girls, yeah. so we're just like, man, whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, even at work, you know, like... Um, I guess this is something that I can share with you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the policy changed. I mm -hmm. bet, I doubt they changed. Mm -hmm. But um, when you apply jobs in China, uh, you're required to list your gender, oh. age, uh, nationality, ethnicity, height, weight, like all the information that are not supposed to be on yeah. a resume here. Yeah. Because that's a big discrimination problem, mm -hmm. right? But um, they want to know all that information. And uh, a lot of women got turned down because they're women and they're mm -hmm. unmarried. Because people, like an employer, yeah. be like, you know, you're unmarried, someday you'll get married and you're mm -hmm. gonna get pregnant. And then that's a big problem. Because mm -hmm, they so, don't want to make you lay off or. <laughs> exactly. Or they don't want to pay for your maternity leave. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something, you know, we, we definitely need to. Um, and necessary continue uh, working on um i would say yeah that's mm -hmm. probably something i felt most oh yeah so uh, this might be a weird question because i know like the main religion here is uh christianity mm -hmm. did you follow that in china or did you have follow like a traditional chinese tra like a religion or 
Mm, that's a good question. You know, Brooke, we um, in China, you know, uh, Christianity is definitely not the majority. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably from the, uh, if you live in southern China, where you know the during Opium War, mm-hmm. um, they open up a, a lot earlier, and they had a lot of foreign, um, especially like European missionaries. Mm-hmm. So Christianity is more common in southern China around the sea area, okay. but like. The Chinese culture is controlled by North culture, basically. Mm, okay. So in nor- North China, we don't have a specific religion. Okay. Um, most of Chinese people, um, I would say, is non-religious okay. nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, back then, though, we have, um, you know, uh, this religion is called Dao religion. Mm-hmm. It's more like a philosophy now. Mm-hmm. It's more like a lifestyle now. Um, and in, I would say... West, Western China, where that is close to Indian and um, um, you know Nepal, mm-hmm. we have a, a quite bit um, population, quite a bit of people. Excuse me, that are uh, Buddhist. Okay, yeah. So not very like <laughs> common, I would say. Interesting. Okay, I can't think of anything else unless there's anything else you'd like to add. No, I feel like you know. All right, we you gathered all the good information. Yeah. yeah, thank you. All right.